it seems that we have not learned from our past mistakes and last decade was the warmest decade ever and we can see that there is a rising global temperature global warming in today's time hello everyone welcome to the in new series of drishti is i am ritu and today we are going to discuss an important topic of gs1 and gs3 so the title of today's topic is why july 4 is the hottest day of the earth and this topic is important from gs1 and gs3 perspective before moving to the points of discussion first of all we will discuss the previous day question consider the following statement regarding article 3 so in this question only one statement is wrong this is wrong and this is right so your answer would be only two why this is wrong because here they have written states so only parliament has authority to amend or do anything under article 3 so this is previous day question moving to the points of discussion first of all we will discuss the news but 17 degree celsius is not hot el nino impact incredibly warm year practice question for prelims and mains moving to the news part so july 3 and july 4 is the hottest day for the earth ever it's not just india or just australia or any other country it's hottest day for the earth ever so this is the news and we will study that why this is hottest day and why there is a global rising temperature because of the global warming and other factors involved here so this is the brief and what was the temperature so the global average temperature was for july 3 it is 17 degree and for july 4 it is 17.18 degree so this is the news this is the temperature moving to the next slide which is but 17 degree celsius is not hot because currently in delhi or in northern india what we are seeing the temperature it is 25 to 30 degree 34 degree so this is not hot kind of situation very hot it is humid but it is not hot and in northern india 17 degree is the cold weather and in coastal area also it very nominal weather so you may wonder that why 17 degree celsius is regarded as hot because this temperature is not limited to a particular area or it just india or any other country it is a global average temperature which includes mountain oceans uh, other terrains so this is not just a land area this is also average temperature of the ocean so uh, we can see that there is a variety of temperature difference between the hill, hilly area between the coastal areas and ocean area so when you find that in antarctic region it is minus 50 degree celsius but in in hilly region it is 0 degree celsius and uh, in northern india what we have seen it is nearly 34 degree celsius in coastal area it is 21 to 17 degree celsius so there is a temperature difference between all over the area but when you will find the global average temperature so it is 17 degree celsius which is very hot and last time it was near in 2016 it was 16.82 but this time it has break the record of 2016 itself so this is the news moving to the el nino impact so why we are here discussing the el nino impact because Uh, first of all we will know what is el nino so el nino is unusually warm ocean temperature in the U equatorial pacific as opposed to la nina so la nina has a cold ocean temperature but here it is a warm ocean temperature so this is el nino and the world meteorological department has said that you know this kind of thing if el nino will come and the onset of el nino will be there that there will be the rise in the global temperature and this may could repeat also so uh, we have already discussed in the previous lecture that el nino is a sign of bad monsoon especially in india so this is the effect of the el nino moving to the next slide which is incredibly warm year so why this is called as a warm year because we have already discussed that the global average temperature has risen not just the india so when we will see the uk temperature so uk met office announced that tuesday that the past month was the hottest ever june for the uk and similarly we have seen that united uh, states also that march was the warmest march of the 2023 of, or of the whole decade and in the canada also we can see that canada is battling its worst forest fire ever and china also there is a heat wave and we can see that in india also last month the temperature was in delhi 42.9 degree celsius and in other areas we have seen that 
सो मेनी टेम्परेचर वॉज राइजिंग एंड फेब्ररी वॉज रिगार्डेड एज द हॉटेस्ट फेब्ररी एवर सो दीज काइंड ऑफ थिंग्स आर हैपनिंग इन इंडिया एंड अदर पार्ट ऑफ द वर्ल्ड ऑल्सो सो ओवरऑल वी कैन सी दैट इट इज इनक्रेडिबली वॉर्म ईयर मूविंग टू द नेक्स्ट स्लाइड विच इज अबाउट अ रिपोर्ट सो अ रिपोर्ट हैज बीन रिलीज बाई डब्ल्यू एम ओ एंड वॉट दिस रिपोर्ट इज सो द नेम ऑफ द रिपोर्ट इज स्टेट ऑफ द ग्लोबल क्लाइमेट रिपोर्ट एंड वॉट इट सेज दैट at least one of the next 5 years which is 2023 to 2027 would be the warmest year and uh, we have already seen that uh, in paris climate agreement the all the countries had decided that they will place to emit under 2 degree celsius at pre industrial level the wmo is predicting that in the 5 year itself it will cross the 1.5 degree pre industrial level so how we can uh, control the temperature by nearly 2 degree celsius so this is a very grave situation for the whole world that we are not able to control the temperature and there are global warming greenhouse gases all these factors are responsible for this kind of high rise of temperature moving to the question part so practice question for prelims consider the following statement regarding cop 27 your first statement is the conference took place in sharam el sheikh egypt under it aware was launched under it loss and damage fund was initiated and here they are asking correct statement you have to answer this in the comment section moving to the mains part so your mains question is describe the major outcomes of 27th session of conference of parties what are the commitments made by the india in this conference so what you have to find here you first you have to find the keywords of the question what they are asking 27th session of cop and the second part they are asking about commitments made by the india in this conference so first of all in intro part you have to define cop that what is the cop it is an apex body where they have discuss about the climate and when it has started if you know brief about the history you can mention otherwise you can just simply write what is the cop and where it has been organized like cop 27 where it has been organized it was in glasgow or egypt you have to write in the intro part and then come to the main part which is body of the answer so here you have to decide that they are asking the major outcomes of the 27th cop so you, first you have to write what are the major outcomes and then uh, the second part says that commitment made by the india in this conference and later you have to write this part so you can also make flow chart like this because in 27th cop we have seen loss and damage fund lead it initiatives life initiatives and then we have also discussed about the climate finance so these are the highlights of the major outcomes of the cop 27 and then you have to discuss about the commitments made by the india so here you have to discuss that what india what is the peculiar feature about the india so what you have to do here that you have to again make a flow chart and then you have to write because life initiative was given by the india and then net zero initiative india has focused on this net zero initiative and what is the year that is 2017 and then you have to also discuss that india had asked to develop countries that you have to control your finances and you have to also control your emission because because of the developed countries developing countries are getting affected so you have to also write this point and then india has largely focused on the climate finance that what is the climate finance and we need to have clarity on this thing so you have to also discuss here and at the end you have to write the conclusion in conclusion you have write that what are the challenges we have and despite having so many challenges we should be hopeful to achieve this target by 2070 this is just for india and you can also give suggestion to the developed countries because of their a uh, emission target and because of their polluting activities developing countries are getting affected so you can all write this in the conclusion part 
I hope you like this lecture. If you have any queries related to this lecture, kindly ask in the comment section. Thank you.